shit talker. My last video was done November 15th, 2015, at 4.23 p.m. The title of it is, You want to send me a message? Bring your bitch ass in my face. <laughs> they did. Not to come in my face and say anything, but they actually came in my face, and I have been bedridden ever since. November 16th, I went out to go to my physical therapy, somewhere they really don't want me to go. I was already tired from all the color codes they had brought to me before. Ah, uh, you know the green. So I go out and of course, you know, it's the... Uh, the wheelchairs and things, you know. So, um, I get down and I get on the trolley and I go down to, I have to transfer to get to the bus to get where I'm going. I get out the trolley and, uh, it's like bam, 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 just like that, you know, and they're like right there, almost like a triangle, and they're green, these green colors. Uh, someone had on a green jacket, then there was a green bag, then uh, like green shoes. But they were not army green, you know, they were um, what I call fresh green. And I said, you know, I, I'm going to draw off that energy today. So, um... I get on the bus to go where I need to go. And I make sure I don't look up to look at anyone because I, 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 I'm tired of the color codes. And I'm tired of the messages. So I'm not going to look. But then finally, I, at one of the bus stops, you know, the bus is stopped. So I just look up. And there was a man outside. He had on a, a green jacket. And uh, I guess when he saw that I was looking at him, he did the hand signal as to take the left hand and put it over the right wrist. Now, that's something that uh, I really never actually, you know, seen like that, you know, the uh, hand signal. And then he takes his hands and he puts them to his head. You know, I, I've seen the, um, they, they do something with a baseball cap, you know, or something like that. I've seen that. So he took both his hands and put them up to his head. And I noticed he had on a baseball cap and it was green too. This is more so like an army green. I guess maybe someone would call it a forest green. And uh, he got on the bus. And he stood across from me, he stood up. And I stared him up and down. I didn't take my eyes off him. And I noticed he was getting jittery because he, when you stare at them, see, they, they're they supposed to scare you, you know? You're not supposed to scare them, they're supposed to scare you. So I just stood, I, I just stared at his ass, you know? He started to get jittery and fidgety and stuff. And then there's a street that I noticed that I never pay attention to any street call, but this street seems to always get my attention. And the name of that street is called Renona. So we get to Renona. And every time, you know, I'm on the bus and we get to Renona, there's a female that gets either on the bus or off the bus and she's dressed very weird you know and so this girl she got got ready to get off the bus and her hair was green but she had the green hair um that i call fresh you know that i can gain energy from and she stood there next to the guy in the army green um 
And she stood there next to the guy in the army green jacket and hat because he was standing, you know, by the back doors. And uh, I kept looking at her hair and noticing that it was green. And the pretty green it was. And then I could see his jacket and his hat. So when she get off the bus, someone else gets off the bus also. And uh, there was a seat that would face me, you know, because I'm sitting on the bus going like this way. Then there are seats that go this way, you know. So when uh, the doors opened, whoever was sitting in the seats here, they got off and the man in the jacket, he sat down. When he sat down, I moved up in my seat just a tad bit so that I can look all around the bus because I hadn't, you know, I didn't want to see anything. But after I saw him standing there in the girl with the green hat, I decided just to look. So I looked all around the bus, all in the back and everything. And then I came back and I turned my head straight to his ass. And uh, I think he stayed on the bus maybe two more stops and then got his little jittery ass off. So now I go into the clinic and I think the clinic is a spot where there is, um, you know, you can do no mind control or no perping or something because I noticed, you know, when I go in there, it's like it's normal, you know. However, I got on the, yeah. So now I do my physical therapy and everything, and I come out. When I come out, like I said, uh, when you're inside the clinic, it's like, you know, everything's normal. There's no perping, no color codes. So I come out. I even can walk to get on the bus, but I'm really tired. And um, everything seems normal. And then this uh, melanated chick, she gets on the bus and she sits down next to me. You know, like across from me. I'm sitting here going this way because these are the disabled seats. And she sits on the other side going that way, but she's across from me. Doesn't have anything in her hand or anything. But she has on military jackets, military hats, and uh, these uh, just uh, green, you know, military color shorts. You know, they're like half pants. They have the strings on them. They come to the knees. And she sits there. She looks at me and she smiles. I just look at her because uh, I, I know that they're listening to my video, so... Now, you know, they want to look me in my face and smile, so I don't know who they are, but like I said, I can smell the motherfuckers. So, a couple of stops down, the bus gets filled with all these people, and they're all in, like, army fatigues, green army fatigues, all of them. I don't know if they know each other or not, but the way they sat down, it's like they didn't. Maybe these two here knew each other, and maybe these three knew each other, and that was it. The rest seemed like they didn't know each other. And then I thought in my mind, are all these people in on it? Are they being simulated? And how can you get a group of people in army fatigues? So many of them. It was about maybe 11 or 12. So how can you get so many together at one time at a, one bus stop? For them all to get on the same bus. So, um, I, I was just in my own thoughts. And so, the bus, you know, it goes down. The girl that's across from me, she gets up. And she actually goes in the back with the rest of them. And so when we get to the trolley, I get off the bus to uh, to get on the trolley. And I, I start to get something cold uh, for my throat. And so I, I, I just started really, really feeling, you know, really. 
I started feeling um, just so lethargic, you know. My throat seemed to be so scratchy. So uh, me and my son, we went in, and my son, he got the the slushy for me, and uh, I get on the trolley. It's only three stops down to the house when I get on the trolley. So um, when I get on the trolley, there's a pink guy. He gets on the trolley. He has on black pants and a gray shirt. A lot of times when I see guys dressed in black and gray or dark colors, I, I really don't think much about it because they're guys and guys dressed in dark colors. But he had on black slacks and a gray shirt that buttoned down. And uh, he had on a black jacket. And uh, he was sitting there. He was, you know, okay. He didn't have a phone in his hand or anything. He got on when I got on. The next stop, a melanated man got on. And now I'm sitting this way on the trolley. And then there are seats that go right here on the trolley. So just say I'm sitting this way. And the guy, he's the melanated man sitting this way. On this side, not on this side. I'm sitting on this side, but the melanated man is sitting on this side and he's going this way. And the pink guy is sitting opposite me on this side. But I'm sitting in this chair and the melanated man is sitting in, and the pink guy is sitting in this chair. There are two chairs here and the melanated man is sitting in the outside chair, not by the window. And as soon as the melanated man got on, he pulled out his phone. I noticed he had a military phone. And he was just pointing it at me. He was pushing buttons. And I, and, and, and then I turned to look at the pink guy. And the pink guy had a military phone too. And the pink guy was pointing his military phone at me. But then he, the pink guy, he put the phone up to his ear. As though, you know, he was, you know, calling someone. And then he took it from his ear as though, you know, no one answered the phone, I guess. But the black guy, the pink guy seemed to not want me to know exactly what he was doing. But the melanated guy, he didn't care. And I kept looking at the melanated guy and, and in my mind, like, he's so soulless. It was as though he didn't have a soul. And uh, I was wondering, how could he do this? And my mind kept telling me to take my phone out, take my phone out, take my phone out. But for some reason, they couldn't move. The only thing I could move was my head. To look at the melanated man and then turn to see what the pink man was doing. So in my mind, I said, well, I guess they're both working together. And... Uh, the the melanated man, he was like crazy on his phone, pointing it at me and crazy on his phone. And he had no emotion or anything. So when it was time to get off the trolley, my son, you know, he tapped me to let me know, you know, we, we get off here. It's like I was in a trance. And uh, when I got off, man, I almost fell down. I was so tired. I came in. I was so, 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 so tired. And I just, I had no energy whatsoever. And I just coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed and coughed. I couldn't stop coughing. So um, my son, he left out to go and get some secrets and and honey. My son was on the internet. He just came back with all kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, because my throat was getting so sore from all the coughing. Yeah, and, uh, and, and I slept a lot. And as I was asleep, my mind kept saying to me, why didn't you move? Why didn't you move? Why didn't you move? I don't know why I didn't move. I, it, it was like I, I couldn't move, you know. The only thing I could move was my head to go from the melanated man to the pink man. Kind of funny, they're sitting in the opposite directions. <laughs> so... 
When I said bring your bitch ass to my face, they did. They did, they did that shit in my face. But I'm doing a video to let them know they fucked up. I mean, I was so tired. I could barely get myself out of bed to go to the restroom, but I did. Uh, the next morning, I was just... Oh, I was so... Wow, well, it's like I was wringing wet, you know? I had to get in the shower. And I got in the shower, and when I was in the shower, I didn't even think of... I, I didn't even know how I was going to get out. You know, I, I didn't know how I was going to get out of the shower. But I got out. And I came back and I wanted to change my sheets, but I had no energy for that. So I laid down and I just... All I could do was go back to sleep. And it's like every hour they were waking me up, I was coughing. But they fucked up. I have about 50 entities. They they don't all come in one time. I mean, they did before, you know, like when I was in my 40s and all this shit began to happen. They all came. Then uh, this was uh, the first time they took my children here in California. And that's when they all came back. They all came because I had to learn my history. You know, I had to learn who I was, where I came from, past lives. And uh, I had to get up on some things that uh, I learned as a child. However, a lot of things I learned as a child, I guess I had forgotten. So a lot of them came. It wasn't 50 at the time because uh, a lot of them were not there. You know, like Tosh wasn't there. The Prophet wasn't there. Um... You know, and some more wasn't there. I'm not going to mention all the names. But it was a lot there. Like, you know, it was uh, my granny, my grandma, Chim. Of course, my Abba was there. And a host of others. Some of my entities are no one and nobody. You know, they're just uh, people that were... Uh, Probably like my brothers in a past life or something like that, you know. And even if I said the names, no one would know them. They all came and, man, I start studying like I never studied before, I mean it. Man, you can ask my children, wow, I put my head in the book at 4 o'clock in the morning. It's 4 o'clock in the evening. I'm thinking it's like 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> my children say, no, you must, 4 o'clock. It's time for dinner. <laughs> So, yeah, and I, I, I learned so much in the, during that time, you know, I was writing books and stuff, but those books are gone now. But on my, the second day that I was down, on the 16th, I was down. Um, and the 17th was the second day, and that's the day all my entities came, all 50 of them. And they fucked up. Because I had Pandora and Inky in the same space. I also found out at that time too that my pineal gland is spaceless. It's like it's limitless. It goes on and on and on and on like space. I, I, I didn't know that till that day. But I had Inky and Pandora in the same room because all my entities were very concerned. Because they were really, really uh, put a beating on me. And no one could see the beating but me and my entities. However, Pandora didn't look at in Inky at one time. Not at all. Not, at, not one time did she look at Inky. But Inky kept glancing over at Pandora. I asked him to stop. And he did, but... Inky was glancing at Pandora because he thought Pandora would grab his ass and probably begin to beat the shit out of him. So he wanted to keep an eye on her. <laughs> but everyone was peaceful. So, day two, he began to ask me questions and 
I, I, I could barely answer them, you know. And I thought I was going to die, you know. That was the good part about it. I thought I was going to die, and I can be with my entities forever, you know. I mean, all day, every day, I don't have to stop to use the toilet. I don't have to stop to eat. I don't have to stop to do shit. I'm dead, goddammit. So that was the only good thing about, uh, you know, the beating. I thought I was going to die. But now I think they're just going to kill me slow. But I don't care because sooner or later I'm going to die anyway. Everyone's going to die sooner or later. So about um, maybe 2 o'clock, my daughter called. And uh, I, I didn't answer the phone because I was really, I was asleep, I was tired, I didn't feel like being bothered. But I didn't answer my phone, so she called back. And, uh, and my son tried to grab my phone. It was still in my purse. I hadn't taken it out. And uh, by the time he grabbed the phone, uh, she had hung up, I guess. So he took my phone he texted her to let her know that I was asleep. But she called back again anyway. So the fourth time she called back, I'm like, damn. So I just answered the phone. He gave me the phone. I told him to give me the phone. I answered the phone and she said, Ima, what are you doing? No, she said, Ima, are you at home? And I said, yes, I'm at home. And she said, well, I'll be there in about 20 minutes. I said, uh, I'm not feeling too good at all. And then she said, well, when did this start? I said, yesterday. She said, well, I might know why. And she said, I'll be there in about 20 minutes. I'm on the freeway. And I'm doing the driving, so I'm going to hang up. And I said, okay. So I waited for her to come. This is 22 minutes in. I'm going to come back. 